Chapter 2711, The Liang family won't be involved. Jing Yunchen's husband's family agreed with her, right? She might ask us for more money than the actual loss. What if she deliberately asks for a higher price? Jing Yunchen's mother-in-law supported her. Do you think the jewelry can take the force released by a cultivator? Jing Jining sneered. Hearing that, everyone was struck dumb and didn't know what to say. Jewelry undoubtedly couldn't absorb the force released by a cultivator. Even an ordinary person could easily damage the jewelry. Slap. Jing Yuilin's father slapped her and criticized her angrily. How could you do that to our family? Who told you to smash the stores? Why couldn't you think of the result before you did it? It was a heavy slap, and even Jing Yunjin almost stumbled when she supported Jing Yuilin. Instantly, Jing Yunjin shouted, Liang Hongfeng, how could you slap Yuilin? Yuilin is already seriously injured. Liang Hongfeng was Jing Yuilin's father. Why can't I slap her? She caused serious trouble. How can you still defend her? This is the good daughter you raised. I'm busy with business normally, so you should educate the kids. Don't spoil them. Look at her now. She's spoiled. Liang Hongfeng was mad. He rarely lost his temper in front of Jing Yanchun because he married into the Jing family and lived in the Jing family's house all the time, he needed to behave himself in the Jing family. Therefore, whenever they argued, he wouldn't get really mad. If he dared to shout at Jing Yunjin, Jing Yunjin would tell on him and he would be criticized. For years, he had lived a painful life, but the Liang family got a lot of help after he married into the Jing family. As a result, he had to tolerate it most of the time. However, now Jing Yunshan had lost the Jing family's support and there was nothing for him to be afraid of. He could vent his anger on them as he wanted. I. Jing Yunshan wanted to argue against him, but didn't know how. She dared to embarrass her husband after they got married because she was born in the Jing family and the Jing family backed her. But now she had lost her connection with the Jing family and didn't dare to argue with him anymore. Besides, Jing Yuilin had indeed made a terrible mistake, and she needed the Liang family's help. She's a burden. She's not married yet. But we have to pay so much money for her. Jing Yunshin's mother-in-law swore. She never liked Jing Yuilin, because Jing Yuilin was a girl and had the same surname of the Jing family. It made her feel as if Jing Yuilin wasn't a member of the Liang family, even though they forced Liang Hongfing to marry into the Jing family back then. Because they stood in awe of the Jing family, they had a good attitude towards Jing Yanchun. They didn't dare to show their disdain for them until now. However, now that the Jing family no longer backed Jing Yanchun and Jing Yuilin, they didn't need to care about their feelings. Upon hearing that, Jing Yanchun was mad. Mom, how could you say that? Actually, Jing Yanchun was aware that old Mrs. Liang never liked Jing Yuilin, not just because she was a girl but because Jing Yuilin didn't have the Liang surname. Old Mrs. Liang only liked the sons of her eldest son and third son. In the past, Jing Yunshin couldn't care less about that because she was a member of the Jing family, but now the Jing family refused to back her. She could only hope that the Liang family would support her daughter, Jing Yuilin. Why can't I say that? She belongs to the Jing family, not our family, so we won't pay a cent for her said old Mrs. Liang. Yu Ilan is also the Liang family's granddaughter. How come she doesn't belong to the Liang family? Jing Yunjin was angry. If the Liang family didn't pay the bill for them, she wouldn't be able to get so much money, because her surname is Jing, not Liang, said old Mrs. Liang disdainfully. It can't change the fact that she's also the Liang family's granddaughter. She's related to you by blood, said Jing Yunjin. Jing Yunjin didn't have that thought before. But now she had to say that. I told you I don't think she's one of us, said old Mrs. Liang in a tough tone. Old Mr. Liang said nothing, because he had the same idea. However, for the sake of his good image, he didn't want to argue with King Yunchen. At the same time, the wives of the Liang family's other sons were gloating over Jing Yunchen's misfortune. Their families weren't comparable to Jing Yunchen's, so they were always jealous of her but they didn't dare to go against her. Now they weren't afraid of Jing Yunjun any longer, so they dared to gloat over her misfortune publicly. However, old Mrs. Liang and old Mr. Liang were present, so they didn't dare to say anything. You. Jing Yunjun was so angry that she couldn't finish a sentence. Jing Jining was also losing patience. He immediately interrupted them. All right, 
I just came to tell you about the damage. Gunning will have an exact number in a few days. I'll come to talk with you about the compensation at that time. Yu Yilin is seriously injured. There must be an explanation for that. Jing Yunjin argued. She felt Jing Yu Yilin was badly injured and it was enough to pay the bill. She went to cause Gunning trouble first, so that's the price for her own rude behavior. As for the damage she caused, she needs to pay compensation said King Jining. It's not fair. Jing Yanjin was still reluctant to accept it. Not fair. Gunning's stores have been smashed for no reason. She suffered a great loss of goods and business. Is it fair for her? You think your daughter's injuries are more serious than her loss, but she cares more about her own business. If you don't pay for it, I'll go to Tandazong for justice said King Jining. Upon hearing the name Tandazong, Jing Yunjin lost her courage. If Tandazong got involved, the consequences could be a lot more serious. Jing Jining didn't want to argue with them any longer, so he turned around and walked away. After he was gone, old Mr. Liang opened his mouth. You should deal with it on your own. The Liang family won't be involved. Saying that, he turned to glare at Jing Yuilin. Jing Yuilin was scared and shrank a little. No child of the Liang family behaves like you. You're the Jing family's spoiled child. You have a bad reputation, but you never learn or change. You have even become more rude over time. I allowed you to live with us for Hong Feng's sake. I don't want our family's reputation to be damaged as well. Although the Liang family benefited a lot from the Jing family after Liang Hong Feng married Jing Yunxian. The Jing family chased King Ye Rong out. After all, old Mr. Liang still accepted Liang Hongfing simply because Liang Hongfing was his son. Chapter 2712, Bailey Zong Su blames herself. However, he wouldn't let Liang Hongfing take over the Liang family's properties. After all, Liang Hongfing had married into another family and didn't have a son. Nevertheless, Liang Hongfing could inherit some of the Liang family wealth although he had his own business. Jing Yunjin felt aggrieved and wanted to argue, but didn't dare to say anything. Once old Mr. Liang finished speaking, he turned around saying nothing further, as did old Mrs. Liang. The others also walked away, leaving only Liang Hongfeng. Even though Liang Hongfeng was really mad at Jing Yuilin, she was his daughter after all so he had to do something. Because she was his only child, he couldn't leave her in trouble. Therefore, he sent people to fetch a doctor, then carried Jing Yuilin back to the room. Hongfeng, what should we do now? Jing Yunjin followed behind Liang Hongfeng and asked anxiously, What can we do? We can only pay the money. Didn't you hear what my parents said? The Liang family won't pay a cent for it. I don't have that much cash now. I can only pay 70 million yuan, so you should go to check your dowries. Sell some of it said Liang Hongfeng. Liang Hongfeng's business had hundreds of million yuan in assets, but he didn't have much cash, because most of his properties were fixed assets. 70 million yuan was all the money he could take out. After all, he couldn't sell his business. They still needed income to live in the future. The Liang family could accommodate them. But Liang Hongfeng had his own ambition and wanted to build up a successful business. What? You want me to sell my dowries? Jing Yunjin couldn't accept that. If she sold her dowries, she would lose her security. Although Liang Hongfeng treated her very well, she had already lost the Jing family's support. Therefore, she had to have enough wealth in her own hands. Or what? You should take responsibility for the mistake you Elan made. Are you trying to hurl the burden on me? Is money more important than you Elan to you? Liang Hongfeng was angry. He couldn't believe Jing Yunjin still wanted to keep her dowries at this moment. I didn't mean that. Jing Yunjin denied at once. Money definitely wasn't more important than her daughter, because she only had one daughter. Therefore, whether she wanted to or not, she had to do it. Dot. The news that Gunning's stores were smashed soon went abroad. The Tang family, the Leng family, Jing Yun Yao, and many other people heard about it. As a result, once Gunning was out of the cultivation world, she saw over a dozen missed calls. Gunning called Tang Haifeng back first, then called Master Leng and Jing Yun Yao. Gunning didn't give a detailed explanation to Tang Haifeng and Master Leng. She only told them that someone caused her trouble, but that the problem was already solved. However, she told Jing Yun Yao everything 
and Jing Yun Yao apologized to her as soon as she answered the call. She knew that Ganning was dragged into trouble because of her. Ganning didn't blame Jing Yun Yao, because it wasn't Jing Yun Yao's fault. Ganning also told Jing Yun Yao that she took Jing Yuil into the cultivation world to get compensation. Jing Jining would deal with it. Jing Jining was the Jing family's patriarch, so he could handle it. The police wanted to help. But Gunning said that she had decided to settle it out of court, because Jing Yuilan was a cultivator, she couldn't deal with it in the mortal world. Gunning's conversation with Jing Yuilan didn't spread, so not many people knew the reason and they were guessing about it. After Gunning came out of the cultivation world, she went directly back to her school. She didn't need to deal with the damage on her own since Chen Kenyai would fix it. They just needed to know how much the loss was. When Gunning was back at school, the students had just finished their afternoon classes, so she went to dine with her friends. Everyone asked Gunning about the news once they met, and they seriously disliked the woman who caused the damage. They believed that Gunning was innocent. The video of Gunning fighting against Jing Yuilan was already uploaded to the internet, so Bailey Zong Xu knew that the girl was Jing Yuilan. Actually, Bailey Zong Xu thought that Jing Yuilan went to smash Gunning's stores because Gunning had helped her out last time, so she felt very guilty. Therefore, at their gathering, Bailey Zong Xu apologized to her. Gunning, I'm sorry. It's all my fault. If it hadn't been for me, you wouldn't have messed with Jing Yuilan and Ging Yuilan wouldn't have smashed your stores. What happened? Song Miyoji and Jiang Zikai asked Bailey Zong Xu, but they didn't blame her. Oh, it's not because of that, it was because of something else, Gunning immediately said to comfort her. Even though Gunning said that, Bailey Zong Xu couldn't believe it, so Gunning asked, have you heard about what happened to the Jing family yet? The Jing family? I've heard about it, but I don't know any details, said Bailey Zong Xu. She only knew that Jing Yun Ya went to take revenge and King Ye Rong's family was chased out of the Jing family, then senior Mrs. Jing died. However, Bailey Zong Xu didn't know that Shang Wen Yang and his disciples were involved, so she had no idea that Gunning played a role in it. In fact, when she heard about it, she had been surprised to know that Jing Yun Yao was still alive. Because she knew Jing Yun Yao's death had something to do with Jing Ye Rong, she didn't think it was wrong for Jing Yun Yao to return to take revenge and disable Jing Ye Rong, even though Jing Ye Rong was her biological father. Jing Yarong had tried to kill Jing Yun Yao, so it was already very nice of Jing Yun Yao that she only made Jing Yarong pay a small price. If Jing Yarong wasn't Jing Yun Yao's father, she would probably have made him pay a higher price. I went to the Jing family along with my master, said Ganing, but she didn't give many details. Oh! Hearing that, Bailey Zong Xu didn't feel guilty any longer. She didn't ask for details either because it was the Jing family's family affair. What are you talking about? We can barely understand, asked Song Miyuj. It's another family's personal affair so we can't tell you much about it. But don't worry, they'll compensate me for the loss, said Ganing. She couldn't tell Song Miyuj and Jiang Zikai much about the cultivation world. Since she said that Song Miyuj and Jiang Zikai stopped asking. Chapter 2713, I'll punch you if you dare to mess with me. The next day, Chen Kani I calculated the loss which came to about 120 million yuan. At noon, Gunning went to the cultivation world again with the list and the damaged goods. Since she asked them to pay compensation, she would give them the damaged items. Some of them could be recycled. For example, broken bracelets could be made into earrings and necklaces. There were some damaged earrings and necklaces which could also be sold at a low price. That could make up for the loss. Gunning wouldn't do that. She didn't need to carry the burden and she would ask them to pay her the compensation according to the original prices. The original prices didn't include profits. However, the cost price wasn't how much Gunning bought them for, it was the normal cost price in the industry. After all, Gunning got jade by stone gambling, which barely cost anything so it wouldn't be much money. As for the damaged medicines and makeup products, they weren't expensive, so the loss was only in the hundreds of thousands of yuan. In addition, they also had to pay her for the damaged cosmetics departments and decoration, which was about 2 million yuan. Although they weren't completely destroyed, they had been damaged and needed to be rebuilt, 
so Ganning needed money for that. Moreover, her employees were injured and needed about a million yuan for compensation and recovery. Therefore, if Jing Yuilan didn't smash the jewelry store, she would only have needed to pay less than 5 million yuan. However, she damaged an expensive jewelry store. Actually, time was needed for the stores to be fixed, but Ganning didn't ask for money for that. After all, her stores made a lot of money in a day, because this was Ganning's third time in the cultivation world. Some people recognized her, but she was a stranger to most people. Suddenly, two men blocked Ganning's way. They weren't ugly, but they looked a little aggressive and they were at most average. Miss, you don't look familiar. Have you come from another city? One of them asked. He appeared to be a gentleman, but he had no sense of respect. After all, normally, a young man wouldn't stop a girl and ask that on the road. It has nothing to do with you. Ganning said coldly wanting to walk by them. She was unwilling to waste more time on them. She could tell with a glance that they were born in rich families and were trying to flirt with her. Unfortunately, when Ganning wanted to avoid them, they caught up to her and stopped her again. Seeing that, other people walked forward to surround them. Some people who didn't know Ganning had sympathy for her, because it was bad luck that she ran into the two notorious bullies in City Sky. People who knew Ganning, however, knew that the two bullies had bad luck this time, but no one bothered to remind them. The crowd was waiting to watch a drama. Come on, don't be so rude. Where are you going? Let me take you there, said the other man. He was leering at Ganning disgustingly. You better not mess with me, or I'll punch you. It doesn't matter who you are, said Ganning seriously. Oh, really? Do you know who we are? How dare you talk to us like that, right, in City Sky? No one dared to talk to us in that tone. The two men were annoyed by Ganning. They felt it was Ganning's honor that they wanted her. How could she reject them? I told you I don't care who you are. I'll punch you if you dare to mess with me. The moment Ganning finished speaking, she attacked them. They were immediately angered when Ganning attacked them. They didn't care that Ganning was a girl and fought against her. They could feel that Ganning was stronger than them but they believed that they could defeat her together. However, they underrated Ganning's abilities. Although Ganning's level wasn't much higher than theirs, they were not comparable to Ganning. As a result, the two men were quickly at a disadvantage. It surprised the two men and many onlookers. Only people who recognized Ganning weren't surprised. She was Shang Wen Yang's disciple, so she couldn't be weak. Before long, the two men were completely defeated by Ganning, although they could fight back. They gave in and stopped attacking her. However, they were reluctant to accept that result. One of them asked, Tell me your name. You can call me Ganning, or King He. My master is Shang Wen Yang. Have you heard of him? Ganning didn't bother to keep her identity a secret. Sometimes, her identity could prevent her from getting into trouble. They had never heard of Ganning before. But King He was a familiar name, and Shang Wen Yang couldn't be more famous in the cultivation world. Therefore, after Ganning told them her name, they were stunned. This girl was Shang Wen Yang's disciple. The two men didn't dare to meet Ganning's eyes again. Ganning didn't want to waste more time on them so she directly left and the two men didn't dare to stop her. Normally, they weren't afraid of Shang Wen Yang, but they made a mistake and sexually harassed his disciple. Dot. After Ganning reached the Jing family's house, she met Jing Jining who took her to visit the Liang family. Once she saw him. Ganning gave him the number of required compensation. She also told him that she wouldn't ask them to pay for the loss of business while the stores needed to be rebuilt. It was the price she would pay for injuring Jing Yuilan. The Liang family didn't expect Ganning to come so soon, but they made it very clear that they wouldn't pay a cent. Liang Hongfing and Jing Yanshin would deal with it on their own. When Jing Yanshin saw Ganning, she seemed alert because she felt it was Ganning who caused them to lose a lot of money. Jing Yanjin was still blaming Ganning, and didn't think Jing Yuilan was wrong. Ganning didn't care how they thought of her. That's the list of money you have to pay me. It's a total of 123.2 million yuan. I can deduct 3.2 million yuan from the bill, so you only need to pay me 120 million yuan. Oh. I also won't ask you to pay for the loss of business while the stores need to be rebuilt. That's the price I will pay for injuring Jing Yuilan. Chapter 2714
No need to care too much about money. Don't think I'm taking advantage of you. My stores make hundreds of thousands of yuan in a day, and the rebuilding needs at least 10 days. I also calculated the loss according to the cost prices, otherwise the total number would be even higher. So, accept that you received a benefit, said Gunning. What? 120 million yuan? That can't be real. Although Jing Jining had told them that the loss would be over a hundred million yuan, Jing Yunjin still couldn't accept the exact number. And she didn't feel grateful for Gunning's generosity at all. Instead, she thought it was a fake list. I have a surveillance video of it and I can give you a copy, said Gunning. Hearing that, Jing Yunjin was struck dumb. In fact, they didn't really think that Gunning would make a fake list, but they couldn't accept the huge amount. And I know it's a lot of money for you so I can give you all the damaged jade. You can make it into jewelry and sell it. You might get a few dozen million yuan, said Gunning. Then she took out a box from her telepathic eye space and placed it on the ground. It was very generous of her. When onlookers saw the box which appeared from nowhere, they were all shocked. Did Gunning have a Kian Kun bag? In their eyes, only a Kian Kun bag could store things, so they didn't have other ideas. Anyway, it was understandable if Gunning had a Kian Kun bag since she was Shang Wen Yang's disciple. In regards to the damaged items, it was generous of Gunning to give them the damaged jade which they could sell. If you're still not satisfied, I think I can only go to Danda Zong for help, said Gunning in the end. Upon hearing that she would go to Danda Zong, Jing Yunshan closed her mouth although she still felt aggrieved. Since Gunning made it so clear, Liang Hongfeng didn't think the list was fake. No matter how reluctant he was to pay the bill, he had to accept it. Fine, but we can't pay so much money right now. Can you give us a few more days? He could take out his money in a few days, but Jing Yunjin needed more time to sell her dowries. Hongfeng. Jing Yunjin was slightly anxious when Liang Hongfeng accepted the amount so quickly, but she also knew that it was impossible for them to deny it. As a result, she didn't know what to say. How many days do you need? Asked Gunning. She wouldn't force them to pay her the money right away, because it was indeed a lot. How about a month? I can transfer 70 million yuan to your account this week. As for the remaining 50 million yuan, I need to sell some properties, so I need more time, said Liang Hongfeng. Sure. Gunning said, then we need to sign an agreement. You can check the damaged jewelry as well. Jing Yunjin immediately went to open the box. Anyway, she had to accept the result, and the damaged jewelry in the box. Each piece of jewelry was wrapped in a gift package with a list of the original price and cost. Jing Yunjin understood that Jade was very profitable, but she was still surprised by the profit it could make. It was true that they would need to pay a lot more if Gunning asked them for compensation according to the selling price. Jewelry from Jade Beauty Jewelry had beautiful designs and women could never say no to jewelry. Therefore, once Jing Yunjin opened the box, the Liang family's female members came over. After looking at a few pieces of jewelry, they all agreed that it was a great loss that the jewelry was damaged. Luckily, only some parts of the jewelry were damaged, and they could be worn after repair. This pendant is beautiful, let me see it. Senior Mrs. Liang was attracted to a pendant by a glance and she squatted to pick it up. Seeing that, Jing Yunjin was unhappy, but said nothing. Anyway, they were just appreciating the jewelry. However, when Senior Mrs. Liang saw the price, she gasped in astonishment. The cost of this jade pendant was 140,000 yuan. Although a corner of the jade pendant was broken, it still looked beautiful, so senior Mrs. Liang wanted to buy it. Yanjin, this jade pendant lost a corner. Can you sell it to me at the price of 50,000 yuan? said senior Mrs. Liang. When she offered that price, she felt a little guilty, because even she knew that the price was low. Actually, she had wanted to offer a price of 20,000 yuan, but it was too little, so she said 50,000 yuan instead. Jing Yunjin was mad and grabbed the jade pendant from senior Mrs. Liang's hand. You're really good at bargaining. The cost of this jade pendant is 140,000 yuan. Even though there is a broken corner, it can be sold at the price of 100,000 yuan at least. How could you think about buying it with just 50,000 yuan? It's ridiculous. Although Jing Yunjin was right, senior Mrs. Liang disliked her tone. Yunjin, 
don't be so mean, I just want to help you so that you can get some money back. How could you judge me like that? If you know I need money to pay the bill, how can you offer such a low price? You merely want to take advantage of us. If I sell it to other people, I can get 50,000 yuan more. Said King Yunjin. Yunjin, we're family. No need to care too much about money, said Junior Mrs. Liang. She also wanted to buy a piece of jade but she was unwilling to pay such a high price for it. If you take us as family, shouldn't you help us with the compensation? Jing Yunjin said mockingly. When she was in trouble, she never thought about burdening them, but they tried to take advantage of her instead. Both senior Mrs. Liang and junior Mrs. Liang were embarrassed and didn't know what to say. It was impossible for them to share the compensation with Jing Yunjin because they couldn't make money easily. Old Mrs. Liang actually had the same intention of getting a few pieces of jewelry at the lowest price, but now she felt that she couldn't say anything. Liang Hongfing was signing the agreement with Gunning at the side, but he still heard their conversation. Nevertheless, he didn't say anything, feeling that senior Mrs. Liang and junior Mrs. Liang were shameless. Chapter 2715, Time to Get Married They badly needed money at this moment, but they wouldn't force their other family members to help them with it. However, if they wanted to take advantage of them when they were helpless, they wouldn't grin and bear it. Although Gunning had no interest in their family affair, she also felt that senior Mrs. Liang and junior Mrs. Liang's behavior was unacceptable. It seemed that there were shameless relatives in every family. Senior Mrs. Liang and junior Mrs. Liang were unwilling to give up. They exchanged a glance and reached a tacit agreement. Afterward, Senior Mrs. Liang said, well, we don't have much money in our pockets. However, we won't force you to sell it to us at a low price. We didn't mean to take advantage of you. We just wanted to help in case you couldn't sell it. But our mother-in-law is senior to all of us. It's our filial duty to please our mother-in-law, right? Yunjin, you shouldn't be mean to our mother-in-law. I agree, although all the jewelry is damaged, I think our mother-in-law won't mind said junior Mrs. Liang. Hearing their words, old Mrs. Liang became happy. She definitely wouldn't mind, but it should be free. Although the Liang family was wealthy and old Mrs. Liang never lacked jewelry, she was used to taking advantage of other people. Whenever there was a chance, she wouldn't hesitate to exploit the others. Of course, as a daughter-in-law, I ought to please mother-in-law. But we're in a mess right now. And we need money. I don't expect mother-in-law to help us out but please don't cause more trouble for us, said King Yunjin. Once she finished speaking, she turned to look at old Mrs. Liang. Am I right, mother-in-law? Jing Yunjin was smarter than senior Mrs. Liang and junior Mrs. Liang. She was a little impulsive and arrogant because she was born in a powerful family, but once she calmed down and thought about it carefully, she could come up with smart ideas. Although old Mrs. Liang loved to take advantage of other people, she cared about her reputation too. Therefore, after she heard King Yanjin's words, she was displeased and snapped at senior Mrs. Liang and junior Mrs. Liang. Why did you two bring me into it all of a sudden? Do I need more jewelry? I don't want other people to think I would force Yanjin to give me a gift. Senior Mrs. Liang and junior Mrs. Liang didn't dare to say anything further after old Mrs. Liang snapped at them. They had lived with old Mrs. Liang for dozens of years so they clearly understood what kind of person she was. However, they couldn't say it aloud. Dot. Gunning had already written the agreement and Liang Hongfing only needed to read it and sign his name. It didn't take much time so they were soon finished. Afterwards, Gunning left. It was time for dinner, so Jing Jining invited Gunning to have a meal with them. Gunning wasn't in a rush to go home, so she accepted his invitation. Gunning was a distinguished guest for the Jing family, so they were very respectful of her. The housekeeper ran over at once when Jing Jining got home. Patriarch. Miss Shin has come. She's talking with Master and Mom in the living room at the moment. The housekeeper passed on a piece of bad news. Upon hearing the name Miss Shin, Jing Jining was upset, but he didn't hate her. He only had mixed emotions. Gunning gave King Jining a glance, but didn't ask about it, because it was his personal affairs. Anyway, Gunning guessed that Miss Shin might admire Jing Jining but she wasn't sure of King Jining's attitude. As for Jing Jining's romantic relationship, because of what had happened to Jing Yun Yao that year, he stayed outside of the cultivation world all the time and never got married. 
Now Jing Jining was getting older and had become the Jing family's new patriarch, so Ganning thought it was time for him to get married and raise a family. However, it was Jing Jining's personal affair, so Ganning wouldn't interfere. Jing Jining didn't bother to avoid Miss Shen, but directly took Ganning to the living hall. Since Jing Yanhua and junior Mrs. Jing were also present, Ganning believed that she could stay. If it was really inconvenient, Jing Jining would have told her to keep her distance. Dot. In the living room, Jing Yanhua and his wife were chatting with a young beautiful woman. There was a smile on their faces, and the atmosphere was quite pleasant. When Jing Jining and Ganning walked in, the young beautiful woman immediately stood up. She turned to look at Jing Jining and greeted him. Hi, Jining. Nice to see you again. This woman was Miss Shen and there was obvious affection in her eyes for Jing Jining. Hi. Jing Jining replied in a flat voice. The next moment, Miss Shen smiled at Ganning and asked gently, This must be Miss Gu, right? Although this was their first meeting, she had heard a lot about Ganning in the cultivation world. Therefore, she guessed correctly once she saw Ganning. Since the girl was Ganning, Miss Chen didn't get jealous when Ganning walked in with Jing Jining. I am Ganning. Nice to meet you, said Ganning. Ganning had met Miss Chen before at Tandazong. But she hadn't heard her name back then. Nice to meet you, Miss Gu. I'm Shen Yiling. Shen Yiling introduced herself. Come here and have a seat. Don't just stand there, said Junior Mrs. Jing. Hearing that, everyone walked over. Ganning also exchanged greetings with King Yanhua and Junior Mrs. Jing. How is it? Junior Mrs. Jing asked with concern. She had heard about what had happened between Ganning and Jing Yuilin. She was angry at Jing Yuilin's behavior. Ganning visited the Jing family with Jing Yun Yao, but she did nothing. She was innocent. It's done now. Jing Yuilin's father agreed to compensate me, but they can't give me that much money right now. They need a month, said Ganning. That's great. Hearing that. Junior Mrs. Jing was relieved, although she knew they ought to pay the compensation, she was afraid it might not be solved smoothly. After all, it was a lot of money, and Jing Yunjin wouldn't easily accept the result. Anyway, since Liang Hongfing agreed to pay the compensation, there shouldn't be a problem. Does Yan Yao know? Jing Yanhua asked with worries, because Ganning got involved in this trouble because of Jing Yan Yao, he was afraid it might cause a grudge between Ganning and Jing Yan Yao. Chapter 2716, please join us. He wasn't projecting his shortcomings on them, he simply cared about them. From Jing Yarong's eyes, Ganning could see what he was thinking, so she said, she knows and she blamed herself, but it actually has nothing to do with her. Besides, I had conflicts with Jing Yarong before as well. Ganning said that to make them think that Jing Yuil and smashed her stores not only because of Jing Yan Yao, she didn't want them to feel guilty. Seeing that Ganning wasn't mad at Jing Yan Yao at all, they were relieved. Shen Yiling glanced at Jing Jining once in a while, but Jing Jining never paid attention to her. He didn't hate her glances, but he felt slightly uneasy. When Jing Yarong and Junior Mrs. Jing looked at Shen Yiling, they were obviously very satisfied. But when they turned to look at Jing Jining, they had a resigned look. Jining, you're not young now. Yun Yao's son is already over 20 years old, but you're still single. Your father and I can't wait to see a grandkid. Do you plan to stay single forever? We don't care whether you have a son or daughter, but you must have a kid, said Junior Mrs. Jing seriously. Although she purposely said that at this moment, she really wanted to see Jing Jining get married. They had talked about it before, but Jing Jining never took it seriously. Hearing Junior Mrs. Jing's words, Shen Yiling lowered her head and flushed. Jing Jining was very nervous and said, Can't we talk about it in private? There is a guest. In fact, Jing Jining understood his parents' worries and he felt a little guilty for worrying them for so many years. He agreed that it was time for him to get married, but he didn't know how to accept Shen Yiling. He didn't hate Shen Yiling. He actually had a good impression of her, but there was a huge gap between them. To be frank, he was old enough to be her father. Although Shen Yiling didn't care about it, he cared. You didn't listen to me when I talked to you in private, said Junior Mrs. Jing. She had spoken to Jing Jining about it privately countless times, but he wouldn't listen. Right, Uncle Jing? You're not young now. I think you should have gotten married long ago. Don't delay it any longer. Ganning chimed in. Do you have to say that? 
Jing Jining gave Gunning a glare. She was adding fuel to flames. When Junior Mrs. Jing heard Gunning's reply, she felt sure that she was right. Hear that? Gunning agrees with me. How long do you plan to delay it? Do you plan to stay single forever? Shen Yiling got a bit worried and looked upset. Would King Jining be single forever? Or did he just not have feelings for her? She understood why Jing Jining was avoiding her, because he told her that they weren't suitable for each other. The age gap between them was too big, but she didn't care about that. As long as there was love, an age gap was nothing. She was also aware that Jing Jining didn't love her, so he thought the age gap was a problem. But she could feel that Jing Jining didn't hate her even though he didn't love her. If Jing Jining hated her, she wouldn't be able to step into the Jing family's home. She knew Jing Jining to some extent and she knew that he would never tolerate people he disliked. Therefore, she had always believed that they could end up together one day. As long as she persisted, he would be touched. However, if Jing Jining had no interest in getting married, it would be meaningless no matter how hard she tried to win his heart. Therefore, if Jing Jining told her that he planned to stay single forever, she might give up. Even though she liked Jing Jining, she didn't want to make it difficult for him. I just need some time. I just took over the Jing family, and there are a lot of things for me to deal with. I have no time to be in a romantic relationship, said Jing Jining in a resigned tone. It wasn't an excuse. He just took over the Jing family and there was a lot for him to learn. As for getting married and raising a family, he was a normal man and had also thought about it, but he was very busy currently. Well, Junior Mrs. Jing didn't know what to say, because she didn't want to exhaust her son. Although Jing Jining said he didn't have enough time to think about a romantic relationship and it disappointed Shen Yiling, he also implied that he intended to have a family in the future. Shen Yiling was relieved because that meant she still had a chance. She was a smart girl, and she wouldn't bother Jing Jining all the time. It would only leave a bad impression on him. She knew where to stop. Before long, dishes were placed on the table, and Shen Yiling stayed to share a meal with them. Although she was filled with disappointment, Shen Yiling didn't show anything on the surface. After the meal, Gunning left. Shen Yiling didn't stay either and left with Gunning. Jing Jining wanted to send someone to walk Gunning out of the city, but Gunning declined. However, Shen Yiling said that she could walk Gunning out before she went home, so Jing Jining and the others didn't insist. There was a long distance between the Jing family's house and the gate of the city, so Gunning didn't actually plan to let Shen Yiling really walk her out. After all, it was their first meeting. Therefore, after leaving the Jing family, Gunning said, Miss Shen, you can go home now. I'll walk out on my own. Miss Gu, it's not a big deal. I have nothing else to deal with right now. Just allow me to walk you out. We can have a walk together after having dinner, said Shen Yiling. She really didn't mind. If so, Gunning didn't turn her down again, otherwise it would displease Shen Yiling. Along the way, Shen Yiling chatted with Gunning casually but neither of them mentioned their personal affairs. Miss Gu, if you don't mind, can we exchange numbers? I know this is our first meeting and it might be a little rude, but I really hope we can be friends, said Shen Yiling. Chapter 2717, Leng Shouting Needs Help. Normally, people were either jealous of outstanding people or wanted to make friends with them. Shen Yiling felt no jealousy towards Gunning. She only admired her because Gunning was extremely outstanding. In addition, for the sake of Jing Jining, she wanted to form a good relationship with Gunning. She loved Jing Jining, so people who were close to him might give her a helping hand if she had a good relationship with them. Of course, Gunning didn't turn it down because she had a good impression of Shen Yiling. Whether they could become friends or not, it wasn't bad for them to keep in touch. After that, they exchanged phone numbers. Shen Yiling walked Gunning out of City Sky, then returned. Although it was dark, night was no different from day. She wasn't afraid of the dark. Dot. Because it was late when Gunning got back to the city center, she didn't go to school or the Saihe Yuan, she decided to go to Mid-Level's mansion. This was the first time that she had stayed in Mid-Level's mansion alone. Leng Shouting was absent and she felt lonely. It had been ten days. But Leng Shouting still hadn't contacted her. She wondered how his task was going. Gunning took out her phone and called Leng Shouting. Even though she knew Leng Shouting would call her once he had time, she missed him a lot. However, 
his phone was still turned off. Ganning couldn't sleep, so she chatted with her friends in the WeChat group. Chu Peihan was filming most of the time recently. Although she wasn't the leading actress, she played an important role. Therefore, she spent most of her time in the crew and rarely had time to chat with them. At that moment, Chu Peihan had just finished shooting for the night and returned to the hotel for a rest. She finally had time to chat with her friends. Everyone asked her whether she was tired. Although it was tiring, she was enjoying it. Chu Peihan loved acting and didn't care about the fame and wealth. Gunning had the least time to chat with them. So they focused on her once she joined them, especially since the news about her stores just went viral, they were eager to know more about it. After the news went viral, Gunning briefly told them about the situation, but didn't give any details. She only said that she had a conflict with the girl so the girl came to smash her stores. Now she had an amount of the total loss and she had met the girl's parents. The girl's parents were willing to pay the compensation, but it was a lot of money so they needed a month to prepare. I thought she's strong, but unexpectedly she's so weak. She should be strong, but she is hardly comparable to Ning Ning. Even though Jing Yui Lan couldn't defeat Gan Ning, she was very strong compared with ordinary people. Therefore, Muk and the others didn't take her lightly just because she failed to defeat Gan Ning. If they ran into her, they would lose. The girl has some abilities. She easily damaged the stores and injured many people. If she doesn't have any skills, she wouldn't dare to mess with Ning Ning, but Ning Ning is just so much stronger than her. You're right. Dot. Dot. A few days later, Leng Shouting still hadn't contacted Ganning, and his phone was still turned off. As a result, Ganning became very worried. It was Friday when Ganning received a call from Jing Yun Yao. Jing Yun Yao said that Wai Ling Fing just called her and wanted them to support Leng Shouting because he had encountered trouble. Upon hearing that, Gunning was nervous. It seemed that she had been so anxious these days for a reason. Leng Shouting was indeed in trouble. Is Shouting all right? Gunning asked in a hurry. She was mostly worried about Leng Shouting's safety now. I don't know the details, but he should be fine. The other members of the Red Flame said that Shouting went undercover in a mutants organization. Before he joined, he told his comrades to report it to the president if he couldn't get out within five days. And he might need a help. Now it has been a week, so they called the president who called me afterwards, said Jing Yun Yao. Even though she felt that Leng Shouting should be able to protect himself given his abilities and that he should be safe, they were still worried about him. After all, Leng Shouting went to deal with mutants this time. If there were only a few of them, Leng Shouting could handle it but no one knew how many mutants were there. No matter how strong Leng Shouting was, he couldn't survive if there were too many enemies. Gunning realized it was serious, so she became anxious too. Without delay, she left school and went to meet Jing Yun Yao at the Saihiyun. Leng Shouting was at the edge of Country R, City Gang. Right after Jing Yun Yao called Gunning, she booked plane tickets to City Gang. Because there were only a few direct flights, they needed to transfer and would spend seven hours getting there. If they took a direct flight, it would only take three and a half hours. The quickest flight they could take was a direct flight and would take off two hours later. It was nearly 2 p.m. and the flight would take off at 4.20 p.m., so they would arrive at about 8 p.m. After Gunning reached the Saihe Yuan, she directly picked up Jing Yun Yao and Shang Wen Yang before heading to the airport. Shang Wen Yang would go with them because Leng Shouting was involved in a dangerous task this time. Shang Wen Yang believed in Gunning and Jing Yun Yao, but he was also very interested in mutants and wanted to know more about them. He could also help Leng Shouting. Leng Shouting was his disciple, so he cared about him. Gunning and the others arrived at the airport at about 2.50 p.m. It was an international airport. After checking in, it was about 3.30 p.m. by the time they reached the gate and they would start boarding half an hour later. They soon found their seats. Normally, they needed to arrive at the airport one or two hours in advance, so it wasn't that late and there were many people by the gate. Because it was an international flight, many passengers from Country R were also there. Although not every citizen of Country R was bad, their country had deep grudges against Country R from the past. So Gunning still got annoyed once she heard language R. Ah, she had a very bad impression of them, and it had never faded over time. However, she wouldn't bother to argue with or hurt them. Chapter 2718 
being aggressive, because it was a public place, they didn't talk about Leng shouting, but Gunning talked to Jing Yun Yao about King Jining. Mother, I visited the Jing family yesterday and I heard Junior Mrs. Jing urging Uncle Jing to get married. Uncle Jing isn't young anymore and it's indeed time for him to have a family, said Gunning. Of course, he should have gotten married long ago. I've tried to persuade him to get married many times before, but he always told me he didn't have a good choice. However, I know he left the Jing family because of me. If he doesn't stay in the cultivation world, how can he find a good match? Jing Yun Yao signed. She felt a little guilty and had a resigned expression. I saw a woman in the Jing family yesterday. Her name is Shen Yiling. Miss Shen admires Uncle Jing. Master Jing and Junior Mrs. Jing also have a good impression of her, but Uncle Jing is obviously avoiding her. I don't think he hates her. I think he has a good impression of Miss Shen. However, he must have his concerns, said Gunning. She didn't bring up Shen Yiling to help her because it was their own personal affair. She only mentioned Shen Yiling because she was telling Jing Yun Yao the news. Because Jing Yun Yao hadn't gone back to the cultivation world for many years and she had only stayed there for a short while last time. Many people in the cultivation world were strangers to her now, so she didn't know Shen Yiling. Avoiding? I guess he probably doesn't have a clear idea yet said Jing Yun Yao, because she didn't know Shen Yiling, she had no idea about Shen Yiling's age, she wasn't aware of their age gap, as they chatted with each other, they suddenly heard a loud argument, it attracted their attention so they turned to look for it, there were two local girls and three men, including a local man and two men from country R after hearing their argument, they figured out the reason, the two men from country R went to strike up a conversation with the two girls. The girls didn't want to talk to them, so the men from country R got angry and began to humiliate them. They even humiliated their country. The local man didn't defend their country, and even joined the two men from country R to humiliate the two girls. He was acting like a lackey, which was disgusting. The two girls even cried from the anger. Other people around were watching the drama. Seeing that, Gunning felt she had to do something. Therefore, she stood up and walked over. She walked in between them and protected the two girls behind her. The moment the three men saw Gunning, their eyes lit up. The two men from country are leered at Gunning, disgusting her. Gunning coldly looked at the local man who was with the two men from country are and asked, Are you a local? In order to not cause a misunderstanding, Gunning needed to make sure of it. I am, so. The man replied, although he knew Gunning stood out for the two girls, he had a good attitude because of Gunning's beauty. I simply want to tell you that you look disgusting as a lackey next to two foreign men. It's embarrassing, said Gunning in a flat voice, but it was a sharp comment. Hearing that, other locals felt satisfied. Even though they didn't want to get involved in the argument, they actually disliked the local man for helping the two men from country are bully the two local girls. You. The man immediately got angry. He snapped at Gunning. It's my own business. It has nothing to do with you. You have no right to judge me. I know, but I just wanted to stop you. Since you can bully other people, why can't I bully you? Said Gunning aggressively. She had no kindness for bullies who helped foreigners humiliate local people. You. The man was mad and threatened Gunning. Don't think I won't beat you just because you're a woman. Saying that, the man seemed to be ready to fight trying to scare Gunning. Seeing that, everyone was worried about Gunning. The two girls were also anxious, so they said to Gunning in a low voice, it's not a big deal. We're girls. We can't win. Although they were mad too, they were outside now and their safety was more important. Besides, they were going to city gang in country R later. They would land in their place. If those men were going to hurt them, they wouldn't be able to fight back. It's fine. Gunning said to comfort them. The two girls were still very worried, but they couldn't stop Gunning, so they said nothing further. If it became serious, they would go to have fun in another place. Compared with their safety, the cost of the plane tickets was nothing. Try if you can. Gunning sneered at the man. You. The man got even angrier. He had the impulse to fight with Gunning but his reason stopped him. Gunning ignored the local man and turned to look at the two men from country R. How could you bully our people? Do you think we're easy to bully? Said Gunning. So what? What can you do to us? The two men from country R replied arrogantly. They looked down their noses at Gunning. Upon hearing that, 
Many local people were furious. They are so mean. How can they be so aggressive? Right? What do they think they are? They are so full of themselves and are always aggressive. Dot. Everyone criticized them, but no one dared to stand out. Although some people from country R were indeed arrogant, some of them were very nice. Therefore, a man from country R walked out and said to the two men, You two should show some respect. When the two men heard that, they didn't think they were wrong. Instead, they became more aggressive. It's none of your business. Don't think that because you're one of us I'll respect them for your face. I just think they're inferior to us. They're cheap. Chapter 2719, International Friend, hearing his words, all the local people were angry. Right at this moment, Gunning threw an apple and it flew directly into the mouth of the man from country R, blocking his mouth. He had to stop swearing. That scene surprised everyone and they all agreed that she was extremely good at throwing. However, most people thought she just had good luck. Nevertheless, whether it was because of her ability or good luck, everyone was pleased to see it happen. The man felt his mouth hurt as the apple stuffed his mouth. He couldn't pull it off until he used a lot of force. Damn you people. The man from country R was furious. It appeared as if he couldn't wait to kill Gunning. Without delay, he threw the apple at Gunning. He didn't care whether she was injured or not. If he cared about that, he wouldn't have attacked her. The crowd was worried too, because they didn't want Gunning to be hurt. To their surprise, Gunning raised her leg and easily kicked the apple away. The apple crossed a parabola in the air and finally fell into a trash can five meters away. Why did she use her leg instead of her hand? Because the apple had already been in the mouth of the man from country R and was stained with his saliva. It was disgusting. It shocked the crowd. If it was because of good luck that she was able to throw the apple to shut the man's mouth, then she must have relied on her abilities to kick the apple into the trash can. Seeing that, the two arrogant men from country are nervously swallowed. They were a little scared and felt that it wouldn't be easy to bully Gunning, but their pride wouldn't allow them to yield. If they gave in like that, they would be humiliated. People might think they were afraid of Gunning. Most importantly, Gunning was a local. If she were also a person from country R, they would have stopped arguing with her! Exclamation mark. How can local people treat foreign friends so rudely? You should be polite and respectful to us. One man from country R blamed Gunning. Foreign friends? Gunning found it extremely funny. After that, she coldly looked at the man and said in a cold tone, Of course, if you're really our friends, we'll be polite to you. But are you our friends? You came to our country yet you bullied our people. You humiliated us. Do you think we'll respect you? It's already very nice of me that I didn't punch you. It's a daydream for you to even ask me for politeness. Oh, are you implying that rudeness is your way of politeness? If so, I'm treating you the same way. Am I wrong? You can't forbid other people from fighting back. Who do you think you are? You don't have privileges in our country. Hearing that, the local people were mad and started to criticize the two men from country R, but a few lackeys still said nothing. The local man who stayed with the two men from country R did nothing either. He didn't think Gunning's words were wrong but birds of a feather flock together so he didn't bother to criticize the two men from country R either. Because not everyone from country R was bad, some people from country R felt ashamed of their people's rude behavior. It was the two men's fault after all, only a minority agreed with them and disdained the local people. Even though it was their fault, they still had a lot of support. On the other hand, there were many people watching the drama quietly. You. The two men from country R didn't know what to say, and felt stressed facing Gunning. Staff from around the gate heard their argument and walked over, but didn't stop them. Instead, they sided with Gunning. They never liked rude foreigners. The boarding will begin in 10 minutes. In order not to delay the departure, please apologize to the two girls, said Gunning. She disliked them, but there was no need to continue arguing with them. Apologize? No way. The two men from country R felt humiliated when Gunning asked them to apologize to the two local girls so they immediately refused. Really? Gunning was mad and put a lot of pressure on the two men. The two men were even more stressed than before and could hardly breathe. At this moment, they were terrified of Gunning. Even the onlookers were affected and suddenly found Gunning a little scary. Without a word, Gunning coldly stared at them. She wanted to see how long they could stay so arrogant. 
The two girls didn't think they needed an apology, because they were afraid the two men might take revenge, but they didn't know how to say it. They felt they couldn't embarrass Gunning and their country. After all, they cared a lot about their dignity. No one said anything as everyone focused on the two men. I'm sorry. In the end, they couldn't bear the pressure any longer and apologized. No matter how reluctant they were, they finished an apology, so Gunning stopped putting pressure on them. You can do whatever you want in your own country, but behave when you are in our country. Don't think we're easy to bully. The two men were unwilling to accept the result, but they knew they were no match for this girl so it was better for them to listen to her now. However, after they arrived in their country, they would pay her back. Gunning understood what they were thinking, but she didn't care. If they planned to take revenge, she would fight back once more. Chapter 2720, Chang Tiki After saying that, Gunning ignored them and turned to look at the two girls. Why don't you stay with us? she said. She also understood that the two girls could be in danger because the three men might take revenge and she was the cause. Thanks. The two girls were terrified, so they agreed to stay with Gunning, but they were still worried and wondered whether they should go to City Gang. Therefore, one of the girls asked Gunning, do you think the three men will cause trouble for us after we arrive at City Gang? It's their country after all. I wonder if we should just change our plan. I don't think it's very likely but I'm not sure. If you want to change your destination, let me pay for you. I caused it anyway so I should take responsibility, said Gunning. They didn't know if the three men would make things difficult for the two girls, but they could never be too careful. As a result, if the two girls wanted to change their flight, Gunning would pay the fee. Whether they returned or changed the tickets, they would suffer a big loss. No, no, we didn't mean that. You stood up for us, so we should be grateful. We disliked the men from country R as well. They should learn a lesson. If we need to change our tickets, we'll pay the fee on our own, said the girl at once. She was very reasonable, so she wouldn't place the blame on Gunning. They wouldn't return kindness with ingratitude. Then will you go to City Gang or do you want to go somewhere else? Asked Gunning. The two girls exchanged glances asking for the other's opinion. In the end, they decided not to go to Country R. As for their new destination, they already had other choices in addition to City Gang, so it wasn't a difficult decision for them to make. We'll fly to Yizu instead, said a girl. Great. The other girl agreed. Therefore, they decided to go to Yizu. Go change your tickets now, said Gunning. Sure, said the two girls. Then they immediately went to the reception desk, and Gunning followed. Although they didn't want Gunning to pay the fee for them, she would. You don't need to go with us, we can deal with it. When the two girls saw Gunning following them, they understood her intention. It's fine, I'll just go over and have a look, said Gunning with a smile. Um, you really don't need to go with us. We can handle it, said the girl again. I'll just go over and have a look, Gunning replied. The two girls didn't believe her, but Gunning insisted, so they said nothing further. If Gunning wanted to go there they couldn't stop her. Therefore, Gunning followed the two girls to the reception desk and finished the formalities. When they went to pay the bill, Gunning did it before them. No matter how they tried to stop her, she didn't take a step back. In the end, the two girls thanked Gunning again. Happy travels. Be careful when you're outside, said Gunning finally. We will. Thank you so much. The two girls thanked Gunning. Gunning gave them a smile, then turned around and walked away. Hey, are you Miss Gu's friends? When Gunning was gone, an employee at the reception desk asked them with excitement. Hearing that, the two girls denied it. We're not. However, the excitement on the employee's face gave them the impression that Gunning wasn't ordinary. Accordingly, they were curious about her identity. You look so excited. Do you know who she is? asked a girl. Of course, she's so popular. But I can't tell you much about her right now. You can search for her information on the internet. Her name is Gunning, said the receptionist. She couldn't chat with them for long, otherwise her colleagues might tell on her, which would affect her job. Without delay, the two girls searched for news about Gunnings on the internet. After reading news about Gunning, they were both astonished. To their surprise, Gunning was such an important figure. She hadn't just helped them out, she also paid the fee for changing their tickets. Jesus, 
they had a stroke of luck today. It was a shame that they failed to recognize her. I didn't know about her at all. It seems I should catch up with the hot topics on Weibo. Wow, we were so lucky today. I wish I had known her identity earlier. We could have asked to take photos with her. Oh my, I'm too excited. I must share the exciting news on my WeChat moments. Me too. As they said that. They directly opened their WeChat and typed furiously. They mainly said that they didn't recognize Gunning after they had met her coincidentally today. They had an argument with several men, but Gunning helped them out and even paid the fee for changing their tickets. Once they posted it, they received many thumbs up and likes. Many of their friends were jealous of them. Normally, only a few people would give them a thumbs up and like, so it proved that Gunning indeed had great influence. Dot. When Gunning got back to her seat, it was time for them to board. Along the way, Gunning could always feel the malicious looks from the two men from Country R, but she couldn't care less. Anyway, after they got aboard, they sat separately, so Gunning no longer felt their gazes. The flight landed at the airport of City Gang when there were only a few minutes till 8 p.m., because Gunning and the others had space to store their stuff, they put everything in it. They didn't have to go collect their baggage. So they directly left. Before they arrived, a member of the Red Flame was already waiting for them and it turned out to be Xijinjin. Right after they walked out, Gunning sensed someone watching her. She didn't bother to glance around since she knew it had to be the two men from Country R anyway. She didn't care about them. After meeting Xijinjin, they directly left. Xijinjin had rented a car and came to fetch them. Once they left, those men who were constantly watching Gunning followed. Xijinjin noticed them as well, because he didn't know Gunning was the target and thought that he had been discovered. He got upset. 